Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys my new rooftop tent. Now you're probably wondering where is my rooftop tent and it actually is on there. It's behind the awning. It is a very low profile rooftop tent. Now this rooftop tent is a custom built personally by me and I got a lot of inspiration from Ripcord and another Japanese YouTuber. I'm going to leave their YouTube channels down in the description for you guys so you guys can check it out. Now I took a lot of influence from these two specifically and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I came up with. Let's go ahead and deploy the tent and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Alright you guys, to deploy the tent is very simple. There's just two latches on the back here and we're just going to open it up. give it a little push and you can see there it is now in order to get in this tent you will need a ladder now you could just put the window down and climb in the tent from the back but I do have a ladder and I'm gonna attach it to the side here and show you guys how I get in all right that's pretty much it for the ladder and they're attached on the side here by these two brackets. I'll show you guys an up close photo, but pretty much they're the same as any other clamshell type rooftop tent. Now, for some reason you can't push the tent up from the ground because maybe you're too short or something. You can actually climb on the bumper and do the exact same thing. If you adjusted your shocks properly over there, you shouldn't have to use much force to push this up. And once it goes, it starts going on its own. So here I got a bungee cord that kind of keeps all the tent material in when I close it. So you can actually just pull it down here. And there, now it's out of the way. Now I do have a rainfly kit that I bought off a website. I'll put a link in the description for you guys, but this basically allows me to open my front door and have a little rainfly. And I store it right here inside the tent so I don't lose it. All right, just like that. Now, like I said, if you wanted to, you can climb in through the tent through the back. If you didn't want to carry around this lunky old ladder around, and if I'm solo, that's usually what I'll do. I'll probably put the rain flies on after and then I'll just climb right in. All right, as you guys can see, I also have a door on this side and the same door is on the other side as well. And I can roll it down or roll it up as I need to. Right now I've just got it held up by this clamp. I have to figure out something about that. But the idea is you can just roll this up and you can have a nice window here. This also comes down as well, so that way you can put your feet out and also helps so you can climb out into the ladder easier. So you can see here, this is just a privacy thing here. You can pull it down, it's Velcroed on. I've sewed some Velcro onto the canvas here. You can see each canvas has double zippers and that's to allow for the door as well as the mesh door on the inside. So it does have a mesh door. You can see here the front, this is the mesh door right here. And the material I use for the mesh is actually kind of funny. I found it at my wife's work and it's just a bug screen and it came in a roll and I just started sewing it on there and it looks like it works. And it actually is, you know, pretty good. All right, you guys, this is pretty much the tent deployed. As you can see, it's using 8020 extrusion aluminum. So this is actually from T-Nuts, not from 8020. You can buy the same stuff from T-Nuts for a lot cheaper. And I'm gonna have a link to all the stuff that I bought down in the video description in a Google Doc or an Excel sheet. So that way you guys can find it easier. And you also can look down there and see how much everything costs. I'll reveal how much everything costs at the end of the video so that way I don't shock you guys too much. So you can see here, the nice thing about extruded aluminum is it has a rail all along the front and the back. So you can basically mount things along the entire rail here. So this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to go with a Sherpa rack or a Prinsu rack is because you have to buy their custom mounts to mount anything on it. This, you just literally need some T-nuts and you can basically mount whatever you want. So you can see here, I got a handle. I put the shock mount on here. I put this little hook here so I can hang a garbage bag or hang whatever I need to or dirty clothes or whatever. Actually, the hook over here is the one I use for the garbage because you can see here, this is kind of dead space right here. So it's a good place to put all your garbage. All right, let's talk about these shocks real quick. I got these on Amazon. They're Amazon special, $36 for a pair. They're 80 pounds of force each, and I thought it was gonna to be too much, 
but actually if you adjust them properly and if you plan on loading your roof like I have here, I have a solar panel on top, then they work out just fine. They seem to be holding up very good and I don't suggest you get any more than 80 pounds because the stronger these are, the more likely your wedge is not gonna be a perfect rectangle. Now you can see here, I just used this ball mount right here and I'll show you guys a close up, but this is a heavy duty one and it just takes a 10 millimeter ball, I believe, on the bottom and on the top and you just put it on and that's pretty much it. And you can adjust this to your desire left and right depending on how strong you want this to be. All right, let me show you guys the front and show you guys how it attaches to the front so that way you guys can get an idea. All right, guys, this here is the front of the vehicle. This is what it looks like when it's deployed. You can see I've got a solar panel on there and I've got four crossbars on there and I'm not using the rear two right now. There's four hinges that go along the roof rack here. Those are heavy duty hinges. And like I said, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys so you guys know which one to buy. I actually bought some aluminum ones thinking they would be enough. But as I found out, those 80 pound shocks are very strong and they will bend the aluminum. So just go ahead and get the heavy duty ones. All right guys, let's talk more about this roof here. This is an ACM panel or aluminum composite material. It's actually from a local sign shop. And I think I paid about $100 for it. I can't remember exactly, but you guys can just check out my parts list. Basically, it is a full four by eight sheet. So I didn't have to cut this one. It just came four by eight and it matched my dimensions, which made it simple. I did have to cut a little bit of these corners off to match the profile of these brackets. But outside of that, I didn't have to do much. I did attach it with stainless steel hardware here. So you will have to drill some holes. You can see here, I also have crossbars on here. These are 48 inches wide and these are the one by one inch um, crossbars. And I found these brackets on Amazon for dirt cheap. And I just bought a whole pack and I used them. I had to drill out the holes a little bit larger. So that way they would take these quarter 20 bolts. And they seem to work just fine for this 100 watt solar panel. And I plan on attaching more stuff back there in the future. But for now, it's just empty back there. All right, this is the driver's side here. It's pretty much the same thing on the other side, except it has the ARB awning on it. And the way I mounted that was I just went underneath here and I used the same L brackets that I had and I mounted it to the bottom of the extrusion here. And then you can see it just mounts to the ARB. Now it was pretty close to hitting that shock, so I did have to move it out a little bit, but this is pretty much as close as it's gonna get. And you can see here, it still clears the door just fine. And I like that low profile look. I did add some lights as well, as you can see here. So if we're under the awning or whatever, we can turn on this light. It's just hooked up to a switch. Let's see if I can get it on. And that'll give me some night camp lights. Now I wanted to talk about putting this thing together and it's very simple. All you have to do is just buy these pieces pre-cut. And like I said, mine is 48 by 96 or four by eight. And these pieces here are one inch each. These uh, corner pieces here. And these you have to actually buy from 8020. T-Nuts doesn't sell this for some reason. And I think it gives it a good finished look if you buy some of these. They are pretty pricey, but they definitely are worth the money. And you're gonna need quite a few of them to connect all the pieces together. But really, once you do that, you build the bottom platform and you build the top platform the same way. Then you're pretty much nearly almost done with the entire platform. All right, you guys, as you can see, we're inside the tent and you can see it's pretty cozy. It will actually fit two adults pretty decently in here. Me and my wife fit in here just fine. Uh, me and my two little kids will fit in here as well. We slept in here in one of our camping trips, my five-year-old and my seven-year-old, and we kind of barely fit in here. You can see here, this is the roof. There's no crossbars or anything supporting it. It literally is just bolted onto the top frame. Now, if you actually hit your head on here, there's a little bit of give, so don't worry about that. You can see here, I was able to fit a two-inch mattress in here, and I just cut this to size with a cooking knife. You're not gonna find a perfect fit mattress for this custom built rooftop tent. So you'll likely have to buy a larger one and use one of those electric knives and just draw a line and then just cut through. Now there is a little eight inch section up front here that doesn't have memory foam. And that's because the memory foam actually wasn't large enough. And I decided just to leave it because I actually didn't need it. Um, there's plenty of room in here. I'm 5'10 and I can sleep just fine in here either direction. I've slept facing out the back so that way I can get a nice view when I wake up or I'll sleep the other way around if I feel like I need more headroom. Now there's plenty of headroom in here. I can get on my knees and pretty much barely hit the top here. 
Now underneath the foam mattress is the ACM panel again. Now this bottom piece I had to custom cut to fit inside of here because it's gonna be a little bit smaller than the one on the roof. And if you ask your local sign shop, they should be able to cut it. They usually have a tool that will cut it exactly to whatever dimensions you want. And like I mentioned, depending on what size you decide to build, you're gonna to wanna to account for the inside being slightly smaller to account for the frame. And it's gonna be sitting inside of the frame. Now on the bottom of the frame, there's a lot of crossbars. I think I have about five or six crossbars. So that way it can support me and anybody else coming in here. The panel needs something to rest on and that's what those five or six crossbars are for. You may need to add more depending on your weight. Now, like I mentioned, the top one doesn't have any crossbars at all. I used to have two of them in here and I realized I didn't need them because there's really nothing up there. And I also have the solar panel crossbars and that actually is helping it box everything in as well. So I removed those because my kids kept hitting their heads on it anyways. And I kind of like this white look anyways. Let me go ahead and take the camera and show you guys inside. All right, so here you can see this is where the memory foam stops and it just goes to here. Now the floor isn't screwed down yet. You can see here it kind of makes some noises. I haven't had the chance to screw the holes in and screw it down yet, but you actually don't even need to screw it down if you don't want to. It's actually been fine just the way it is. And when you close it, because of all this stuff in here, it will actually hold it down and not make any rattling noises. So you can see here I have my lighting here. It's just a box that controls the LEDs up here. And you can't really see that, but let me turn it on for you guys so you guys can take a look at what that looks like. So this hot wire is kind of just hanging here right now. I have to figure out how to attach it to here. Probably just sew something there. But basically I'll just plug it in here and flip this switch. That'll supply power to this box. And then this thing actually comes with a switch as well, which will turn on the power. And then up here, you can see I set it to red right now. That way there's not too much light in here at night. And my kids wanted a nightlight, so I just left it red for them. Now you can change the color with the remote. And I just have the remote Velcroed up here. So it's easy and I don't lose it. And we can change the color. There you go, here's white, blue, green. And if I notice the battery's getting low and you can see it's pretty full, I can just shut it off here or just shut off the whole box. There are two outlets here and USB ports as well if you wanna charge your phone. So you can see here, this is where you can put all your nonsense and your phones and your snacks and whatever. So that way you have some place to store stuff. You can see here, I have a night light as well and I'll show you guys that later. And then here are the tent poles. I just store them in here. I actually don't leave them out here. I actually put them underneath the mattress and that way I don't lose them and they're kind of out of the way. So in here, these are double zippers. So you can use either side and zip the entire thing up. So you could zip the mesh and leave the other one, or you can unzip both of them and you know open the whole entire door here. Or you can just open the outer door. And like I said, if you don't have, I don't really have anything to hold this thing up yet. I'm just gonna throw it on the roof for now. And you can see here with the mesh door, works great. All right, over here, we got a couple of storage items here. I just bought these Velcro things and you can throw stuff in here phones shoes whatever now one thing that i didn't finish yet is i need to fix these corner holes here and i need to do some velcroing to close up those gaps so right now there's a little gap in the corners this one's not too bad you can see i have some velcro in there but i just use double-sided tape right now it's not holding very well so I need a sew a piece on there and then connect that to that. All right, so this is pretty much the inside and I can't actually leave any bedding in here because it actually doesn't fit. The uh, clamshell actually won't close. So if you wanna fit extra bedding like your sleeping bag or blankets, you'll definitely wanna consider a larger extrusion, maybe three inches. I'm using two inches on the bottom and two inches on top. So it only gives me about three inches inside and this memory foam is two inches. So you can see there's just gonna be not a lot of things that are gonna fit in here. Now you probably could leave an inflatable pillow in here or maybe a light sleeping bag, like a summer one, and it'll probably close just fine. All right, here's the front of that gap that I was talking about. And you can see here, the floor is just not screwed in. It's just free floating in here. And you can see I put this mesh screen under here as well. I right hear it helps with condensation and I haven't had a problem yet so I guess it does.
All right, you're probably wondering how long it takes to put everything away. Now, normally you're gonna have a sleeping bag inside. You can just take that out, throw it in the back. And to be honest, it takes longer to put the sleeping bag away back in its bag than to put this tent down. So let me go ahead and show you guys in real time how long it takes. Take off the ladder. Watch your fingers. And I like to climb up back here. Uh, take the bungee cord, put it back up. And then I have this strap here, I'm gonna pull down. Let the air out. And then kind of tuck this stuff in here. Helps to have all the doors zipped down, which is already zipped down. Do the same on this side. All right. All right, once you get to here, use the clamp. And just close or shut. And I forgot to tuck this handle back in here. All right, that's pretty much it and we're ready to go. No fuss, no headaches, no wife yelling at you, hopefully. And you can be on your way now. All right, this here is how it attaches to the actual vehicle itself. This is the factory roof rail here. And you can see I made a couple of spacers here to lift the height of the tent here. Otherwise it would have hit the uh, roof. So there's two pieces of, I think a three eighths inch aluminum. I think it's a total of half inch here or maybe five eighths or something like that. But it's just held on in eight spots like that. So there's two here and then there's two right back here at the back. And then same on the other side. And that pretty much secures it to the roof. And that's why it's so low profile because it literally has no, <laughs> no extra gap between the roof top and this crossbar here. And in the front, I'm using these adjustable feet and it's basically just on this angle and it has adjustable nut. I had to make this bracket, but this concept is very similar to the Sherpa rack, the original one they had. It uses this as well and it rests here as well. Now there's not a lot of weight up front, so it should be okay. And shouldn't have to worry about your roof too much. Uh, one thing I also had to add up front here is this one by one to support the back of the platform here. And I also have that in the back as well. So there you go. And that's just to prevent this front part from going all the way down. It's actually a support for the, uh, the panel here. All right, here's a close up of that locking mechanism here. You could put a lock through here to prevent somebody from stealing your pillows, I guess. I mean, if they want it that bad, they can have it. And then over here, you can see, here's my handle and it has a pull strap on here. It's just a, one of those kayak straps that people buy and it helps them get up on the kayak. I'll put a link in the description for you guys. And there's just two of these locking cam thingies to hold the uh, entire tent down. All right, I wanna show you guys really quickly how I attach the tent to the extrusion here. It's very simple. This in here is called Keter Rope and it's a quarter inch in size. And I just cut a little tiny piece here and then I sewed a loop into all the fabric. It's just a little tiny loop. It's a quarter inch loop or a little bit larger. And then I just slide this Keter Rope in there. And what that does is it makes it thick enough where it cannot come out of this channel now, you see? And that's how I attach it. It's attached the same way up there, all the way around. All right, you guys, I just wanna do a quick walkthrough on my rooftop tent here for you guys. And I wanna say the job is really difficult. So if you wanna take this on, the hardest part really is gonna be the sewing. And if you guys have a friend or family member that knows how to sew really well and has a good sewing machine, then I would definitely tackle it. If you wanna learn how to sew, you can definitely tackle it as well. The fabric material isn't too expensive. The zippers and stuff are a little bit expensive. So you might wanna get a couple extra ones just in case you mess up. Now, the reason why I went with this rooftop tent is because it's very low profile and it still actually fits in my garage. That was one of my requirements. I didn't wanna to have to park this thing outside. As you guys know, a lot of other rooftop tents are really bulky and ends up being just parked outside permanently. As you guys know, there's a lot of catalytic converter theft and there's a lot of theft in general. And I didn't wanna leave my 4Runner out there. And I actually did leave my 4Runner out one night and it got broken into. 
so I'm a little bit paranoid now and this 4Runner only sleeps in the garage now. Now you're probably wondering how much I spent on this roof rack and all in all the total came out to be just under $2,000. Now it's going to be a little bit different because pricing changes all the time. For the most part, the metal was the most expensive and I had to do a lot of multiple orders. So the shipping kept adding up, but I'm going to leave a parts list for you guys down in the video description. So make sure you guys check that out. That way you guys can just order the right stuff the first time and not have to spend a whole bunch of money on shipping. Like I said, I really like this tent because it's very versatile. It's very low profile. And another thing that I really like about this tent is the fact that I can move it if I need to without having to close everything up and clean everything up. Some of the other tents, they use a ladder as a support, and once it's out there, it's going to be hard to move this thing. Now, if you were to ask me if I would do this again, I probably would say no to someone else, but if I were to do it for myself, I probably would do it again. Mainly because the cost, even though it's $2,000, it's still a lot cheaper than some of the other manufacturers. Now, if you go and look at CBT or GFC for this style tent, you'll notice that they're all in the $3,500 plus range. And CVT actually doesn't even ship it to you. You actually have to go to them and install it. And most of the times they're out of stock. And not to mention there's like six to nine month lead time that you're gonna need to wait before you actually even get your tent. Now it did take me about a month to build this tent. So you have to take that into consideration. And to be honest, the sewing was the hardest part. And if the sewing was easier, I probably would recommend it for other people. But many of you guys probably have never sewed in your life like me. And trust me, it's a lot harder than it looks. And I had to do a lot of trial and error and a lot of really late nights trying to finish this thing up. Now you'll probably notice there's some things that I haven't finished up and there are also a couple problems that I need to address. Now one of the problems I noticed with this tent and also other tents of this style is when you're sleeping in there with a lot of people and you don't have the windows open, it will build up condensation and you will have water dripping down on your ceiling or at least water on your ceiling. It may not be dripping. Um, I noticed that when me and my two boys were camping in there and the ceiling was a little bit wet but it wasn't dripping on us or anything like that, but something to point out. Now GFC has this problem as well, so it's not specific to my tent. I think it's just a common problem. Some people have put fans in to try to address this. I don't really wanna put a fan on there. It's kind of bulky. So I'm gonna keep testing it out and maybe I'll try sleeping with the windows open. We had them all closed and we were pretty isolated in there when we were camping. Well guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you guys hit that like button down below. I know you guys are gonna have a lot of questions about this tent, so make sure you guys check out Ripcord and the Japanese YouTubers channel. The Japanese YouTuber has a lot of content on this specific tent style, so make sure you guys check that out. I couldn't have done it without his help, and I couldn't understand anything he was saying, but fortunately he had subtitles, and it was very helpful. Well guys, have a nice day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And just for fun, I put that whip up here. It serves as a pretty cool nightlight when we're camping outside and it works in the dunes as well.